Go to. There we go. Recording. <laughs> um, you you, uh, you can always catch the recording if we get it from the computer into the uh, into the cloud. But it's uh, it's usually there, and you can get to that on the website, and you can get to a transcript of more than what I'm going to say about um, uh, James chapter 2 today. Uh, if you're interested in that, if you go to the blog from the desk of, uh, uh, of Pastor Ed, I, I, don't, I don't have a desk, but it, if, uh, it's from the desk. There we go. Last week we started the book of James. And uh, let, me, um, let me get that picture out of the way there. Uh, we started the, the book of James, and I said that the first chapter of James is really talking to us about the God way, okay? And, and pretty much what I wanted to say was that we need as people to learn to accept our lack of control over life <laughs> and react to the experiences of life with the joy and the wisdom of God. For God knows better than we do, and he's ready and willing to teach us his ways. Uh, so life becomes a series of choices. When an experience comes my way, do I choose to do things my way, or do I choose to do things God's way? And, and that's really the question of uh, chapter one of the book of James, is that we should... <laughs> try as best we can to always choose God's way. Chapter two, I'm going to call the good way, which is the way we need to choose. Okay. Uh, and the good way is going to say to us in chapter two that we need to see all people as God's children, not just some. And all sin is breaking the whole law. He's going to say this comment uh, in the text that if you sin in a little way, you've broken the whole law. Okay. And then um, he's going to say that faith is the alternative to trying to live by the Old Testament law. So let's listen to what James has to say. Chapter 2, verse 1. Listen to me. Please do not look at our faith as if it gives us some special status in the eyes of our Lord Jesus Christ. We are all sinners who have come to him for help. There is no favoritism. If someone shows up at your church with jewelry and clean clothes, appearing to be rich, and at the same time a man arrives in dirty clothes and looks to be a poor man, we need to treat them both the same without showing favoritism. If we put the rich person in a fine stuffed seat, we don't have any of those, do we? Uh, in a fine stuffed seat and stand the poor person in the corner, haven't we distinguished between the two and judged them and done so with motives of evil partiality? That's not the right way to treat God's children. He has given great faith to those who are poor, and they are heirs of the kingdom. He promised to all of us who love him. God loves him, and we have just judged him and shown him disrespect. When we have to go to court, is it the poor person who sues us or the rich man? That was an interesting comment that James makes in the midst of that. Um, as we don't care about the poor, we do care about the rich. When we show favoritism towards people, we actually blaspheme the name of Jesus. So be careful. So the first point really is seeing all people as God's children. The truth is that everybody belongs to God. He knows our hearts and he loves us. Doesn't matter who we are in this world, doesn't matter what we've done, doesn't matter what experiences we've had, he knows what we're going through and he loves us. And he sees our potential 
and desires the best for us. Again, does not matter who it is. We have a tendency to look at the outside of people and form opinions and judge them accordingly, but God doesn't. He looks in the heart. He looks down inside. He sees the love. He sees the hurt. He sees the pain, and he sees the potential. If we accept that truth, that doesn't make us any better than anybody else. It just makes us more in tune with what God's truth is. So James talks about prejudice, the act of prejudging another person. It's a common sin. We all have it. Uh, we, we judge between male and female. We judge between slave and free or employers and employees. Uh, in our society, it seems to be a happy thing to judge the big corporations because somehow they are big. Um, we, we judge the Republicans and the Democrats because we don't like them. And we probably judge a few independents, but we don't know who they are. So I don't want to leave them out. Okay. Um, you know, we, we judge whether people are American or from someplace else. We, we judge whether they're Christian or not Christian. And God has asked us to not judge, to not prejudge somebody else. For he feels compassion for each and every person. He desires to help each person at every turn. And he sees the potential of what could be if they would just accept his wisdom. Prejudice is always done with the wrong motive. It's done with an evil motive. What's best for me? What's best for my friends, my situation? It's always done with the benefit coming my way rather than as God would have it in the good way, the benefit going to others, the benefit going to God. Scriptures talks about using our standard of judgment on other people, which is what we're doing when we're judging people. We're saying, I know what's right, and my way is better than your way. And when we use that standard of judgment, the thing that fascinates me that we, we don't really hear because we don't want to hear it, Jesus says that if you use your standard of judgment on someone else, guess what? I'd be happy to use that same standard of judgment on you. And you will still be a sinner. You don't even have to live up to my law. You can't even live up to your own law. And you'll still be a sinner. Every time I judge someone else, the scriptures say, I condemn myself. If it were not for Jesus, I'd be dead and gone a long time ago in so many different ways. The good way, God's way of living, the, the goodness that he wants us to live with, encourages us to choose a way of life that treats other people in the same way that Jesus has treated us. Let's go on and talk about the law for a minute. Verse 8 says, The law Jesus gave us says we need to love our neighbor in the same way we love ourselves. It is good if we do this. However, when we treat people with favoritism, we are acting different from God's desire. Keep in mind this truth. Stumbling in one small part of God's law is stumbling in the whole law. A person is not just guilty of the one sin, but of all sin. God did not just give us a law about adultery, but about murder as well. If you avoid adultery, but you murder someone, you're guilty of breaking the law. And you remember Jesus uh, said, you've heard it said you should not uh, commit murder. But I say to you, anyone who is angry with his neighbor, who says you fool, uh, I don't think I've ever said that about, yeah, all the time. Uh, you know, and I, I keep trying to say, no, 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 I can't say that. I'm not supposed to say that. But that's the attitude of the heart that says, why are you doing that? And I'm judging my standard of judgment. 
We have a new law to live by, verse 12 says, which is the law of liberty. And we should make our life decisions accordingly. Judgment will treat us in the same way we have treated others. If we have not shown mercy to others, why would we expect others, or especially God, to show mercy to us? Accepting to live by the law of liberty is the second part, in my mind, of what James is trying to say to us about living the good way. The law given to Moses was full of right and wrong things to do, the do's and don'ts. Most people remember the don'ts, don't do this, don't do this, or the thou shalt nots. The Pharisees were the ones that encouraged people to make every effort to do exactly as the law prescribed. And they gave the impression that God would love them more if they were good people, meaning that they did good things from the law. However, James reminds us that when we break one little law, we're guilty of breaking the whole law. And showing favoritism is one little law. It's sin, and it's evidence that we are all sinners. The law of liberty. When you're confronted with a choice, choose good over evil. Choose others over self. I think that sums it up. Treat people the way we desire to be treated or do unto others as you would have them do to you. Act towards them with the same grace, the same forgiveness, the same mercy which Jesus has shown to us. That's a tall order. I understand that. But that's something we're called to strive to. James makes it very clear if we do not show mercy to others, we cannot expect other people to show mercy to us. What we sow, we reap. Paul taught it this way in Galatians chapter 6. A person will reap whatever they sow. When someone sows to gain personal benefit, they will reap difficulty and frustration. When someone sows the things of the Spirit, they will gain eternal life in return. Please do not give up on doing good things for others. You might not see the results right away, but do not grow weary. Good things will come your way. That's what Paul says. Don't grow weary. Solomon said it this way in the book of Proverbs. Those who treat others with the ways of sin will find that nothing good will come their way. Those who take care of others who have less than they do, will in the long run find good things flood into their lives. James also says that if we choose, if we do not choose to treat other people with love and forgiveness, how can we expect God to treat us with love and forgiveness? Well, the, the good way reminds us that God took the first step. And he said, I love you no matter what you do. All I want is you to respond in faith. He loved us so much that he gave Jesus to us and through Jesus the complete forgiveness of all our sins and adoption into his family as a child of God. With this great example, he asks us to treat other people in the way we would like for them to treat us. And then verse 14, he says, listen. James says, listen. What does a person gain if he has faith but does not demonstrate that faith in some kind of work? And he goes on to talk about the, the need to live a life that demonstrates the love of God towards us. Faith without works is dead. The good way is to do something about our faith. Jesus taught that the will of God was for us to believe in his son. I don't know why for years we have taught that the will of God is for us to do good 
when in reality the will of God is for us to believe, and out of that belief comes the doing of good deeds. But we get focused on, I want to make a checklist of all the things that I've done right and make sure I've done them right, rather than focus on this thing that is harder to grasp and harder to, to say, yes, I believe. I believed all day today. I'm con- going to continue to believe tomorrow. Jesus taught us we need to believe. And yet Jesus taught that there would be a judgment day before the great throne of God where all the people will be divided in front of the throne. <clears throat> and I love this picture. It's not by race. It's not by nationality. It's not by religion. It's not by sex. It's but whether or not we demonstrated our faith in the simplest of ways. A cup of cold water given to a neighbor. It's not did I did I do everything the Bible said I was supposed to do? No, did I act in kindness? When the choice was before me, did I choose good as opposed to evil? Were we willing to make a sacrifice of our time, our talent, our treasure, whatever it might have been? to love and to serve another person. The good way that God wants us to live demonstrates the love of Jesus to other people. It bears the fruits. Remember those? The love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. For the first time in my life, I was able to remember those because of the song. Okay? <laughs> all, all of them were listed there, you know, in my mind. Mm-hmm. James says the good way for us to live is to see all people as God's children. To live by the law of liberty that says I choose good over evil whenever I have a chance to choose. And that I can't sit back and just say, I believe I'm okay. But I've got to take that next step. And based on that faith, based on my thanksgiving and my praise to God, I act in the love of the fruit that he has given to me. I act in the same way that he has treated me. I treat others. does not matter who they are. I think it's important for us to keep that in mind. I was walking to the store the other day and I parked uh, around the corner where I don't normally park. And there was a gentleman sitting on the side of the building. Uh, I've seen him there uh, often. And uh, he had his guitar, he was playing a little bit. uh, and, And I would have at the moment clearly said, okay, he's homeless. Maybe he is, maybe he's not. That would be the first thing that comes to mind. And he stops me and he asks a question about my license plate on my car. Okay. And the the license plate on my car, if you don't know, says W-A-R-D-O-H-H. And everybody reads it as if it has something to do with war. (laughs) And and it it doesn't. It doesn't. It has to do with the fact that my grandmother used to call me Wardo, as short for Eduardo. She gave me the nickname, and so that's where the license plate comes from. But uh, but his first reaction was, what, are you a war dog? And I go, oh, no, 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 uh, that that means Wardo for Eduardo. And he says, oh, okay, that's good. What's your name? My name's Michael. I said, well, my name's Ed. He said, well, uh, praise God. I hope you have a blessed day. <laughs> yeah, right. You never know. <laughs> you just never know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, now, does he do that? I could go into questions about does he do that because he's been taught that if he treats people saying <laughs> blessings in Jesus' name, he gets more money or any of those kinds of things. But how did I treat him? I tried to treat him as I would anybody. Not seeing his outward but seeing what's inside as God looks at the heart. And I think it's important for us to learn to live our lives uh, in ways that demonstrate that we believe all people are God's children 
And all of God's children deserve his love and mercy in every way we can give it. So just encourage you to, uh, to think about that this morning or this week. Hymn number 284 is one that uh, uh, I'm familiar with from camping days back in the, uh, uh, the 70s. Is uh, They'll know we are Christians yeah. by our love. 284. Let's stand and sing together.